अब तक बस तेरा नाम सुना था अब तक बस तुझे दूर से देखा था इस बार जो आया हूं तो इतना तो रुकूंगा कि कुछ हम तुम्हें जान सके और कुछ तुम हमें मान सको लद्दाख शायद कोई विरला ही होगा जिसने ये नाम ना सुना हो लेट्स गेट लेट ले चलो और लद्दाख कॉलिंग आजकल जैसे ही समर्स शुरू होते हैं हम सबकी सोशल मीडिया फीड्स पे बस इसी तरह के हैशटैग्स दिखते हैं मैं ये सोच रहा था कि वाई डिड आई टेक दिस लॉन्ग टू कम किया टू बी ऑनेस्ट आई जेन्यनली फील दैट दिस कोल्ड डेजर्ट नीड्स अ ब्रीदिंग स्पेस स्पेशली फ्रॉम अस तो इसलिए ये सोच के रखा हुआ था कि यहां तभी आऊंगा जब टाइम निकाल के इस जगह को थोड़ा और बेहतर समझ पाऊं and finally after all these years i'm ready to untravel ladakh ladakh pahunch ke sabse badi galti ye hai ki ams ko halke mein lena ams matlab acute mountain sickness this happens because of reduced air pressure and lower oxygen levels at higher altitudes as per reports 11 people have died due to ams between january to june this year and the only way to avoid it is to get acclimatized by proper rest in the first 24 to 48 hours and i was glad to be able to find a place which has peaceful surroundings good food and great views jade house is a boutique homestay conveniently located in a sleepy neighborhood the property is a beautiful mix of traditional architecture and modern amenities while the homestay is perfectly equipped with all the essentials what makes it truly special are the small thoughtful touches a selection of comforting teas an assortment of chocolates a great collection of books and delicious home cooked food with the views of the lay palace All of this makes for an ideal remedy to acclimatize on the first few days. पहले दो दिन proper rest और acclimatization के बाद I decided to go on a heritage walk with my BNB host Sezen, an accessory designer by profession. She is now full time into her hospitality business. साल के छह महीने वो अपना होम स्टे चलाती हैं और बाकी छह महीने अपने पर्सनल ट्रेवल प्लान बनाती और एग्जीक्यूट करती हैं With this kind of an experience under her belt, I know I am in the right hands. So this is Baker Street, and this is literally, uh, you know, all these shops selling breads, Kashmiri breads and Kargili breads. So this was established in the 16th, 17th century by the Balti traders. Basically, every morning, the busiest part of Leh, because everybody from Leh just descends upon this. you know lane just to buy the morning bread Breads, and yeah. yeah i mean we have it traditionally with uh, you know uh, b- local butter, butter tea. tea you dip it in and you have it and it's heavenly <laughs> it's actually tastes better than khambir and although khambir is the ladakhi bread the sardo bread i personally prefer the kashmiri you know bread This area where this building is located is called Thas Soma, which literally translates into New Garden. Okay. All right. You said Thas Soma. Thas. Thas Soma, Soma, which con- translates into New Garden. Right. The mosque that we just crossed is Mazar-e Sharif, and that is actually the oldest mosque in Ladakh, contrary to what's published on Google that Jama Masjid is the oldest one. So Mazar-e Sharif was the oldest mosque, which was actually you know built. by the yarkhandi traders because uh, the place where this uh, building is located the central asian museum this actually you was the yarkhandi sarai so there was like a c shaped building out here wherein the ground floor would have the stables where uh, the traders would 
tie up their you know animals like um, horses and camels and then the first floor would have restrooms and uh, so sarai is basically a rest stop yes right? of course and the building itself is divided into four levels so the ground floor is the ladakhi level wherein there is uh, information about the silk route uh, how it uh, you know the route from ladakh and uh, to where on it went and also like about the earliest uh, like the bronze age rock art you know uh, that have been found here or artifacts uh, relating to the ladakhi history can be found on the ground floor and then this is the first uh, plane landing in lay on a makeshift air strip so somebody happened to capture the moment and yeah 1948 yeah so the second layer will have the yarkhandi uh, floor which is uh, inspired by the yarkhandi uh, you know uh, traders and uh, the artifacts left behind by them so these are artifacts donated by families on loan from you know the ladakh art palace or you know just um, things that were found eventually and the third floor will have a bit more tibetan and chinese inspired uh, you know artifacts along again related to the silk route again which have been donated by families or uh, you know which are on loan from different places in one frame you can see Mazar-e Sharif the Leh Palace the Datun Sahib and in fact even the top of the Jama Masjid that one yeah Mazar-e Sharif like i told you it's the first mosque and our king himself was so secular because his mother was muslim it's perfectly normal my own family we have like a separate uh, muslim branch wherein i told you my great grandfather was a muslim growing up for every eid i've been to you know my muslim relatives houses and we've got eid and the same you know during our this thing uh, new year celebrations which is losar like you know all our muslim relatives they come Although not as grand as the Leh Palace, the Central Asian Museum says a lot about the history of the region and the old Ladakhi way of life. Ladakh ne silk route aur Central Asian trade mein ek significant role play kiya hai and the museum with its artifacts, maps and pieces of heritage definitely highlights this role. So ye jo pura pani aa raha what is this ye stream what So this is all glacial water that is melting and uh, gradually coming down into the streams and we in fact divert it into our gardens also into our fields also oh. and it's actually really good for the plants as buddhists you know we believe that the land is very sacred to us the mm. water is very sacred to us the lakes also for example pangong you mm. see the videos of you know tourists from People outside driving. coming and driving into the lakes mm. and you know uh, just throwing litter everywhere and people locals being really uh, you know uh, pissed off about it you don't realize that the water also we have mountain deities we have water deities like this lake is sacred to us like for example even for pangong like you know the closest monastery to uh, from, uh, to pangong like there are monks from the monastery who organize cleanliness drives which is like a weekly cleanliness drive and they are like these baby monks who have picked up you know uh, from beer cans to dirty condoms from the banks of the lake and that's so disrespectful to you know uh, the lake and also to the local people and uh, like forget the of course the monks now these are the stories and incidents which are truly heartbreaking I know that not everyone wants to be a slow traveler or an experiential traveler but how difficult is it to become a responsible traveler but well as they say common sense is really uncommon So this is the Datun Sahib it's a 400 year old tree and it was planted by the head of the Himis monastery uh Taksang uh, Respa and of course the sikhs have claimed it now that you know it's converted into datun sahib because they claim that guru nanak ji plucked a twig from this tree and brushed his teeth so now it's become like a place of uh, worship and of course uh, you know a lot of punjabi tourists come here to matha teko out here in teedi meedi galiyon se nikalna aur aas paas ki choti choti cheeze observe karne se ek baat to evident hai ki leh is not just about the markets and monasteries to really experience the soul of this place one has to tread through the paths that the locals follow um your the placement of the house would depend on uh, you know your rank or how important your rank is uh, you know uh, to the king so the munshi's house is right under the palace 
this uh, spindle studio is uh, that you see right. is actually the king's uh, astrologer's house okay. so it's a bit niche hmm. and then so on accordingly like you know different ranks and different uh, you know whatever of importance uh, that uh, your rank is to so niche utna hi niche niche so it, the, this is the best way actually to go to Le Palace. A lot of tourists just take a taxi and they go to Le Palace. There is nothing inside Le Palace. Main rasta ye nahi hai. Main okay. rasta there is a gari wala rasta jo saare tourists jahan se jaate hain. Okay. But you have to understand Le Palace ke andar kuch nahi hai. Okay. And that's what a lot of tourists say ke andar to kuch tha hi nahi. It was all empty. It's all about the journey to that. Yeah. Place. Walking through one such lane, Sezen took me to meet someone very special. Someone who is an ice hockey player in winters and an art conservator in summers. Noor Jaha is currently the goalkeeper of Indian women ice hockey team. But along with that, she also follows her passion for art and runs a conservation studio where she is dedicated to protecting and preserving the cultural heritage of Ladakh. <laughs> Was it, I mean, an ice hockey player getting into art conservation? or an art conservator getting into sports <laughs> like i was 13 14 years old like and i heard about like uh, the, like this news on the radio that one girl like you know danced on ice like wearing skates or something like that and i was really like you know i mean like oh what is this all about and uh, my cousin brother was playing hockey like he had like you know he was in the local team one of our village teams and he had a pair of skates like he had a pair of skates but like obviously he's like you know much older than i am and he wears like i don't know size 8 and uh, then i went to him and uh, i was like you know ka like you know can like i borrow your skates and he, he laughed at me and he was like do you know like you know your feet is like this much <laughs> i was like no but i really want to try it because i heard that like you know one girl like, you know was skating <laughs> on the ice and i want to try it too and he was like yeah take it and i did like you know i was happy like you know although like you know the balance was really difficult and everything once i got some confidence i started going to the village uh, like you know our village reservoir where more hockey players w would come okay. and there I met like you know uh, two more girls who were skating there and they were really good and I saw them and like you know this was my first like you know first hand experience where I had seen like you know girls skating. And uh, it was, you know, one fine summer holiday that I had come back from Delhi and, uh, you know, I saw a couple of people who were working on wall paintings. I was just intrigued by what they were doing. I just sat, like, you know, and I did not have the confidence to go and, like, you know, ask what they were doing. I was just, like, you know, looking and, like, you know, trying to go outside and then again looking inside. So after a moment, there was this lady and, uh, like, you know, we had a small interaction and found out that there is a, like, you know, full-fledged profession that people, like, you know, are pursuing and it's called, like, you know, they're called conservators. They're called art conservators. Then I realized my life had completely changed because this felt right. After a long time, you know, after spending three years in Delhi, I felt like, okay, now, like, you know, this is something I really want to study. So both the works, like, you know, with, uh, like, playing ice hockey, and doing the art conservation work, like, you know, both is, like, you know, both, I would say, very meditative. And, uh, see, yeah, like, it looks very aggressive. Yes, it's an aggressive sport. But at the same time, like, you know, I would say that, you know, it has a certain sort of a calmness in it, too. And generally, what do you uh, come here for? I come here for this and for this. <laughs> it's the best. So you this one is a baked is, cheesecake. Yeah, this is a baked apricot cheesecake. Apricot cheesecake. And you cannot get it this fluffy and soft in the dark. At this altitude, it's impossible. So for him to master this out here, mm. being a non-local, it's a task. It's a feat in itself. And like I told you, on Facebook also, there are groups specifically called High Altitude Baking, where Achha. people share tips and tricks on how to get it right 
अच्छा भाई कांट कांट रेडी वेट टू डिग इन एंड ऐसा तो नहीं है ना कि वो आपकी तरफ रखा है तो नहीं 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 विल शेयर यस थैंक यू दिस इज माचा मेले माचा मेले क्रेप केक सो इट्स क्रेप स्टैक्ड ऑन वन ऑन टॉप ऑफ द अदर टू मेक अ केक आउट ऑफ इट सो इट्स लिटरली द लेवल ऑफ प्रिसिजन एंड क्राफ्टमैनशिप for lack of a better word <laughs> and that also coming from someone jo khud bake karta hai yahan pe that's that's but... something on our way back we made a final stop at another intriguing place Namza is a boutique come fine dining restaurant that is keen on preserving and promoting the cultural identity of Ladakh with its elegant fusion of farm to table dining and a designer store. So what we are doing is we're trying to revive uh, for the dining part we're trying to revive the lost cuisines of Ladakh. Okay. And uh, this is our kutya hmm. where we're, where we're trying to you know um uh, restore our uh, traditional uh, attire as well as you know trying to you can say um we're trying to bring new colors to the dresses production designing everything. Got it. Yeah. See, and uh, I think two things that I'll be learning from you today one mm -hmm. about of course about the culture of the food as well as the fabric mm -hmm. and the other thing is how to pronounce the word kut kutior right kutior kutior okay kutior. aaj at least main ye acche se seekh ke jaunga because every time i've heard it and i know i'm pronouncing it wrong sometimes it's, it's kutor it sometimes it's kutur but it's actually kutior yeah kutior kutior okay. kutior yes See? you always so, learn something new <laughs> this section is um, we have all pashmina this is sheep wool This is yak wool. So pashmina is traditionally what a Kashmiri product? No, no. It's uh, you can say the source of pashmina is Ladakh only. Even Kashmiris they source pashmina from Ladakh. Acha. Yes, it, it is uh, you know the one of the finest wool in the world. Hmm. You can say, and uh, because it's more famous because of the warmth hmm. and the softness. You can feel the softness. You know, this is pashmina, and this is sheep wool. You can feel the difference. Yeah. This one is quite coarse, yeah. yeah. But I was always under the impression because over the years, pashmina mm -hmm. has become a, a has become synonymous with Kashmir. Kashmir, exactly. Yeah. So that's what we are trying to do here. You know, we are trying to introduce what Ladakhi pashmina is. We are mm -hmm. trying to introduce it to the world because, yeah, it's frankly speaking, Kashmir is uh, pashmina is known as Kashmir only now. <laughs> so. It's mostly they, the Kashmiris. They are very actually skilled artisans. You can mm. say the, you can see their work, no, the weaving work and the embroidery also. Mm. So now what we now we have started introducing all the. But they also the source pashmina. their their pashmina wool from. Yes, from, from Changthang Valley of Ladakh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> the main source of pashmina is Ladakh. Ladakh. Yes. For a city like Leh which is mostly known for just monasteries and markets I was introduced to a completely different world aur itne inspiring logon se milne ke baad aaj fir ye realize hua ki kahaniyan banti hain logon se main Ladakh magnetic hill camel rides ya selfies ke liye nahi aaya I'm here to experience the life and the culture amidst the sprawling landscapes of this fascinating region if this is what you travel for then stay tuned as there's plenty more to come bas haath tham ke rakhiyega as i untravel Ladakh